Good morning, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm a little surprised we got such a, a big turnout uh, as we did. I wanted to announce this morning that uh, I have hired a new chief deputy, also called under sheriff, uh, the number two in the sheriff's office, and that's uh, Jim Pugil, former interim Seattle police chief. Um, this is a big organization that we have here. King County uh, is the 13th largest county in the country. We're spread over 2,200 square miles. I've got over 1,000 employees. 700 of those are police officers. It's a big department to, ma to manage, and uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that I've got somebody uh, in the number two position that's experienced, that uh, is progressive, and feels the same way that I do about policing in the 21st century, and especially policing in the Northwest, what we really need and what the citizens of King County are looking for. And I think uh, Jim Pugil is the perfect person for that. Um, this is not meant uh, that I didn't have good people internally, because I do. But I think an organization our size needs outside, needs an outside viewpoint. I think that's extremely important. I don't have all the answers, and uh, nobody in this side, the sheriff's office has all the answers, and Jim doesn't have all the answers. But when we put our heads together, when we look at other ways of doing things, this is the, uh, the perfect solution as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I could not be happier. I could not have more confidence uh, in Jim, and uh, he's a great choice. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Pugil. Thank you. I'll keep it short. I just want to thank you, John, for uh, giving me this chance to get reengaged with law enforcement and work for the great communities that King County serves. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I've had an adequate break, and I'm uh, looking forward to working and reengaging with everyone else. So thank you very much. Obviously, tan and rested. <laughs> <laughs> One of uh, of uh, Jim's qualities is, uh, as I said, the progressive nature, the different way of doing police work. And one of those is LEAD, Law, Ensor Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion. That started in the city of Seattle, started in uh, Belltown, been very successful. It's been exported to the Sheriff's Office, both in White Center and Skyway, and in downtown Seattle through our Metro uh, Transit uh, Officers and our Sound Transit Officers. And Lisa Dugard has been uh, part and parcel to that. She's been a driver of that. So I'd like Lisa to say a few words as well. Sheriff, I'm sure there are a few people from your organization that were worried that you were going to appoint me to something. Uh, <laughs> um, good morning. I just want to say that I think this is really an inspired choice by the sheriff. Um, he's right that there are some really tremendous people in the King County Sheriff's Office, and I've had the opportunity to work with some of those commanders and deputies in the LEAD um, program, which we coordinate. Um, and Jim Pugil really is going to be a wonderful addition to the King County Sheriff's Office. Um, as uh, in his role in the Seattle Police Department, he achieved a position of national and international um, uh, influence in um, some important direct new directions in policing um, that, that really are um, what we need in King County uh, at this time and um, directions that the sheriff also represents. And those include finding ways to address longstanding and important public order issues, that, but in ways that don't exacerbate tensions and divisions between law enforcement and communities, particularly communities of color and um, people with uh, chronic public health issues. So I think this is a wonderful choice at a critical time, and really congratulate the sheriff and uh, under Sheriff Pugil. Thanks. Before we go to questions, there was an irony that came out, came out of all of this. When I uh, announced I was running for sheriff, and some of you were actually there on uh, April 24th of uh, 2012, I quoted Sir Robert Peel. Sir Robert Peel, the term Bobby, uh, came from uh, Sir Robert Peel. <clears throat> and I said, quoting him, that the police should not measure results by the number of arrests or the lack of crime. It's certainly much bigger than that. When uh, Jim retired from the Seattle Police Department, he quoted Sir Robert Peel as well. And he said, quoting Robert Peel, police at all times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. So there's no doubt in my mind that Jim and I are going to be on the same page as where policing needs to be and needs to go in King County. Again, I couldn't be more pleased. Welcome. 
Can we Any, ask questions? You, you certainly may, Amy. <laughs> I, I would like to keep you from asking questions. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, for, for Jim, uh, I guess we call you Deputy Chief. Chief Deputy. Chief Deputy. Um, what do you per perceive to be the differences between the King County Sheriff's Office um, as far as this challenge, differences, similarities, things that are making you want to take this position and move forward in law enforcement? Well, I think every police department is challenged today. Uh, number one, in fact, we talked about it on a national level, is improving relationships, improving trust from the people that are, or gaining the trust and maintaining that trust from the people that we serve on a regular basis. And it, do, it really doesn't matter what department you're in, but the police have to gain that trust and maintain that trust. So that's one of my goals. So the same thing basically from Seattle to King County, you see those Oh, oh job, sure, basically. yes. There's no differences. Are there any differences that you see between the King County Sheriff's Office and Seattle Police Department? Uh, just with the work I've done, uh, urban policing is much more uh, what Seattle is focused on. Uh, sheriff has to do urban and rural policing and rescue and a lot more varied uh, work. But it's still serving the people, getting to know the people that we are hired by and, and serving those people. Jim, uh, the King County Sheriff's Office, Seattle PD, two agencies that have to work very closely together. Um, given the circumstances surrounding your departure from SPD, I know at one point there had been rumblings that you wanted to go for the, the new chief spot. Uh, they replaced you as interim chief. You then retired. Um, what do you consider right now your relationship to be? What's the state of your relationship with the Seattle Police Department? Oh, I have a tremendous respect for the, for the Seattle Police Department. I always will. I have a tremendous respect for the men and women, the uh, sworn and the civilian that work in that department, as well as the command staff. Uh, what happened there is, is past, and uh, I'm just glad to be back in the mix. What, what have you been up to? I've been gardening, and uh, <laughs> uh, actually been traveling about a week a month, uh, working with Open Society Foundations, uh, working with Lisa at the Defender Association, um, traveling to many countries, trying to not export lead, but explain to policymakers, elected officials, police commanders, how lead became uh, a part of what we do in the Northwest. Everyone around the world is struggling with the criminalization of low-level nonviolent drug users, nonviolent, non-predatory drug sellers. Um, I've been to Guatemala. Uh, the uh, Republic of Georgia just came back from the AIDS conference because there's a big nexus between the transfer or the uh, intravenous drug users and the exposure to AIDS or uh, hepatitis C. And so police do have a significant role in not only public safety but making sure that public health initiatives get started and remain s strong. We see this so often in law enforcement where someone retires, and deservedly so, because they've had very long careers, I mean decades. So why is it that you wanted to come back? Because you did, you were at the point where you could retire and sort of enjoy that. So why do you want to come back? Well, John and I were just talking, and uh, he offered it up as a possibility, so I thought about it. I've, I've, I've always loved serving the public, and I've always loved working with other agencies not just law enforcement, but anyone who's trying to make a, a community a safer, healthy community. And this is a great chance. Jim, are, oh, are there things you learned at SPD that you think you can bring over to the sheriff's office? You talked about it being more of an urban policing environment. Um, how do you think you can help this organization? Well, I don't know exactly how. Uh, there's, there's a lot of commonalities. I mean, both of these agencies have big IT systems. They have communications centers, they have uh, human relations, uh, human resources. Uh, a lot of the work that I did with the city uh, I think can transfer and uh, I think I'll be able to share some positive things with them. That's kind of what my next, what is going to be your primary role here? Serving John. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> making sure that he is able to do his job and also making sure that uh, we keep a, an, an eye toward the outside to ensure that King County Sheriff's Office implements best practices in policing. Have you met the new SPD chief and what do you think of her? 
I met her years ago at a conference. I think she's a tremendous choice and a very, very good person. Jim, can you say how you're going to continue the LEAD program or how does that influence what you're doing? Well, I've been talking to John about it. Um, he mentioned that it's, it's, it's starting to get going out in White Center, and I think that that's a great opportunity. I think working with uh, uh, the Defender Association and um, the Racial Disparity Project, as well as uh, the officers with the Seattle Police Department, to try to get that going there. I think John also mentioned that uh, Sound Transit, which is a contract, agency with the King County Sheriff's Office. A lot of the folks that the Seattle police officers deal with in the Belltown downtown area are the same folks that the transit officers have to deal with. So I think replicating the program and expanding it is a significant priority. Some critics have said that the King County Sheriff's Office officers have more discretion when it comes to use of force than the, some of the current reforms at the SPD. Uh, how do you see the differences between those two offices and how they handle discretion of use of force? I, I would say it's similar. Uh, both every officer in the state operates under the federal constitution and the state constitution. Now there may be some nuances with policies, um, uh, but it's fairly similar. Uh, all, all of the officers go to the same police academy out in Burien. Uh, so, I, did, I don't see a significant difference. John, when did you come up with this idea? <laughs> oh, a month or so ago. Uh, I hired Ann Kirkpatrick because I knew she was going to be to help us out. But the agreement I had with Ann is, uh, her agreement basically, is she would stay a year because she teaches for the FBI and that's what she really wanted to do. So she actually stayed on for 18 months. So I knew that her time with the Sheriff's Office was going to be relatively limited. So after she left, um, then I just wanted to take a break and really look around and make sure that I got exactly the right person. And I think I, I, think I have. I think the synergies are going to be great. I think it's going to be a situation of one plus one equals three. Uh, like I said, I couldn't be happier. Brandy, to your question about retirement, I think it's highly overrated. <laughs> Been there, done that. I'm, I'm glad to be working, and I think Jim is going to be glad to be working. As well. I have a couple awkward questions. Jim, how old are you? I am 55. 55. And then is this effective immediately and how much is he being paid? September September 1st, I think the pay scale on uh, the county is uh, around 173000 Off the top of my head, it's none of your business how old I am. <laughs> there could be people that? inside the um, inside your department who feel like you know, they're being passed over and that this is an insult to them in some ways in no way being a reflection on Jim Pugil, who's highly regarded, but uh, what would you say to people who've been in the organization a long time and maybe were hoping for this job? I think, uh, I think my people are better than that. I think they understand that uh, what's, best for the, what's best for the organization is what's best for them. And as I said earlier, uh, this is no way a reflection on any of them. This is getting the best person for the best job for what we need in any large organization, which is uh, at times an outside viewpoint. None of us, as I said, none of us have the, uh, all the expertise, all the knowledge that we need. Uh, and when you can bring the 35 years as a police officer, is that what it is? 32. 32 years as a police officer at the Seattle Police Department doing, it seems to me, like almost everything uh, over there. And you can bring that to the Sheriff's Office. When my uh, experience inside the Sheriff's Office is uh, admittedly rather limited, um, it just it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and so I think I think my people will understand that. I'm not the least bit worried that they won't. Did you have conversations, or I don't know if you interviewed for this job, but interview someone else inside <clears throat> the department for the job? No. 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 I talked to Jim and, and Jim only. Sheriff, how much more would you be expanding budget-wise for, for the LEAD program to bring it throughout the county? We don't need to expand the budget at all. This is a different way of doing policing. In fact, it'll save money. Uh, the LEAD program involves, rather than booking somebody into jail, we get them into treatment, essentially. That's, that's the, a very short version of it. It doesn't cost any money to do that. In fact, it saves money. And going down the road, assuming it works, and it's, we're still looking at it, it's still being evaluated, it could save a tremendous amount of money. You know, the, the, 
low-level drug crimes have, have incarcerated an entire generation of people, of young people and mostly people of color. We've got to figure out another way to do that. And as I said during the campaign, I-502 was one way to do that. The LEAD program is another way to do that. And I'm sure there's other things out there that we can do as well as we go forward. We have to be open to that. We cannot arrest our way out of society's problems. And I've heard Jim say that as well. I'm not sure which one of us coined the phrase. It was probably me. But uh, we have both used that phrase. We cannot arrest our way out of society's problems. And we need to realize that. We as police executives need to realize that and figure other ways to keep the community safe. And it doesn't always mean throwing somebody in jail. And Jim gets that, and I get that. And that's what's so good about this partnership. And the LEAD program, you do work closely with SPD. Is that we do. Yes. And there's no awkwardness, nothing? You've None whatsoever. I mean, you discussed this with the chief and all of that. Oh, yeah. And, and this has been going. We've used LEAD now in the sheriff's office for almost two years. It'll be two years in January. So this is not necessarily new. And remember, we have our biggest precinct right now is Metro Transit and they primarily are in the city of Seattle. We have no problems working with SPD. Nobody's asked me. I've met uh, the new chief uh, on several occasions. We have a very, very good relationship. I think she's fantastic. She's exactly what Seattle needed at this point in time. This is exactly what the sheriff's office needs at this point in time. It's a win-win for everybody, especially the citizens of King County.